Okay, hello everyone. <clears throat> Good afternoon, great tens. Good afternoon. Let's see who's here. Um, so I have Tino and Mikaela. Hi guys, how are you? I hope everyone is well. All right, so in today's lesson, we are going to look at the input and output devices. Input and output devices. I'm fine, I'm fine guys, thanks. Right, so input and output. Right, so this is a revision for the input and the output devices. Remember, tomorrow we have a test, a practical and a theory test. Um, so in your theory test, you will have questions that are based on the input and the output devices. Right, so the Right, so at the end of this lesson, you should be able to, one, describe the different input devices and also describe different output devices. All right, so today's lesson is very easy. You know these things and it's not your first time learning about these things. And besides, um, this is the easiest in the subject computer application technology. Right, so as you learned earlier, an input device is any hardware device that allows you to enter data into or interact with the computer. So any hardware device that you use uh, to interact with the computer or to enter data into the computer, that's a hardware um that's an input device right so hardware devices can also come in the forms of pointing devices scanning and reading devices microphones and many more right so today we will look you will learn more about the different types of hardware devices their features and uses Right, so we have, so amongst the hardware devices, amongst the input devices, the input hardware devices, we have different groups. So we have pointing devices that are hardware and used to input data into a computer or interact with a computer. So we have pointing devices, scanning, and reading devices, we have microphones and many more. Now let's start with pointing devices. Pointing devices, any pointing device that you know, any pointing device, pointing device that falls under the input and also the hardware any hardware device that is used to input, like to interact with a computer or to put data in a computer. So any of these devices, let's see. Name them, please, please name them. Name them. Anyone? Okay, so hardware devices uh, can come in form of pointing devices. Remember, I said 
pointing, scanning, reading devices, microphones, and many more. So there's pointing devices in, I mean, the hardware group. Okay, so the hardware for input, remember hardware and input, hardware input. In the hardware input, what devices are we using to input data into a computer or to interact with a computer? Any hardware device that we use. So today we are talking about hardware devices that we use to input data into a computer or to interact with a computer. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying, but we are talking about the hardware devices that we use to input data into a computer and interact with a computer. Then later we will talk about the output devices, devices that we use for output. Right, so inputting data into a computer, we have different groups of devices. So these devices are grouped. We have pointing devices, scanning, and reading devices and many more. So the first group um, is pointing devices. So pointing devices are used to control the movement of the cursor on the screen. Examples of a pointing device. One, we have a mouse for the desktop computer. Sorry for my spelling. And we have what we call a touchpad. So here, yeah, for a computer, for a desktop computer, you have a mouse, the normal mouse. You all know what a normal mouse look like or how a normal mouse look like. We have the rectangular pads that are mostly found on notebooks and laptops. So here is a rectangular pad. You can move the mouse pointer on the screen by moving your fingers on the pad. So we, uh, I guess we are all familiar with the notepad. So if you want to move the mouse pointer on your screen, you must move your fingers on the pad. Okay. Yes, uh, Michaela. Yes. That's correct. Okay, so the next one, the next example, we have a trackball. Um, some call it an upside down mouse. So we have this, this is called trackball, but some call it an upside down mouse. This is a stationary pointing device. It has the same functions as a, a mouse, sorry, although the user may make use of the ball to move the cursor. With this one, you can use this red ball to move the cursor. Okay. Then we have the touch screen. So touch screen. This one allows you to use your fingers. It allows you to use your fingers to press the keys directly on the screen. So you are touching. Most smartphones and tablets are designed with touch screens. Right, so this one, it allows you to use your fingers to press the keys directly on the screen. Right, so many smartphones and tablets are designed with touch screens. Our next one is a joystick. A joystick or a game controller is a type of an input device mainly used for games. So we know what a joystick is. As you can see, a picture, picture of a joystick. 
it is made up of more or more i mean it is made up of one or more buttons for special functions so if you are moving the players or are playing the game you're controlling what is on your screen then a joystick has um, buttons for special function right so right um Next device, any device that you can think of. Any pointing device that you can think of. Any pointing input device that you can think of. A device that falls under input, hardware and input device, any device that is in a form of a hardware and is used for input. Any device that you can think of. Any device, I see Lion Heart is here. Hi Lion Heart, welcome. So today we are talking about the input and output devices. In Input and output devices. This is a revision. Remember, tomorrow we have a test, a theory test, and a practical test. I think you are ready for the practical test. Now I am preparing you guys for the theory test. Okay, let's see. Hi, Lion Heart. Okay, so. So we mentioned a few devices, devices, few devices that are used for, I mean, so today we are looking at the different input devices and also the output devices, but in the input devices, remember, now take note, the input devices in the input devices, the input devices are, they have groups. In the input devices, we have different groups for design, I mean, for, for devices. So our devices are put into groups. We have pointing devices. So pointing devices that falls under the input, that does the input. So pointing devices, uh, the first group in the input devices is pointing devices. I guess you, I think you can understand what I'm trying to say. Input devices. Now with different input devices, we have um, different groups under the input devices. So the input devices are grouped. They are in groups. The first group is pointing device. The first example for pointing devices, we said it's a mouse and a touchpad. As you can see a touchpad here is the touchpad. And you know most um, the regular mouse. Yes, and then we said we have a trap ball. A trap ball. I said this is a stationary pointing device. So this is used for pointing. So while the user is pointing, that means the user is inputting data or interacting with the computer. So this is used for input. It has the same functions as a mouse, although the user may make use of the ball to move the cursor. So with this one, you can use this ball to move the cursor. Then we mentioned touch screens. Our tablets and cell phones are designed with touch screens. As you can see, this is a pointing device. Pointing device. Another pointing device. Yeah, the next example is a joystick. Joystick is also used for pointing. So pointing. A pointing, a pointing device that falls under the input group. Pointing, so a joystick is used for pointing. 
Then we have scanning devices. Scanning devices, but note also this is used for input. Input. So this is also used for input. Now this is the second group um, in the devices group. Remember, sorry, this is the second group in the input. So input input devices remember the first group was pointing the second one scanning which devices are used for scanning flat bed number one after the document or picture has been scanned an electronic file is created by the scanner in the computer's memory so this one is used for scanning you can scan a document or a picture. Then an electronic file is created by the scanner. So after you have scanned a hard copy, an electronic uh, file is created by the scanner. Then we have a multifunctional printer. Some printers come with four-in-one functions, which means that it can scan, email, copy, and print. So with this one, you can scan, email, copy, and print. Okay. Any of the scanning devices that you guys know? Any device? that we have not yet mentioned any device right so the next one the next device we have a hand a handheld barcode scanner a handheld barcode scanner a barcode scanner is an example of a handheld scanner, generally found in supermarkets or warehouses, as it is used to read a product barcode. So this one is mostly used in supermarkets and warehouses, and is it's used to read a product barcode. Okay, so Lionheart is saying, should I read? But this one was sent privately, so I'm not gonna read. Let's see. Yes, we are coming to that point. So she was asking, how about the IP scanning devices like fingerprint scanners? I could be wrong though. No, you are correct. We have those, we are still coming. Okay, so we have a radio frequency identification, the RFID readers. Unfortunately, I do not have a picture for that, but you can use your internet search for the radio frequency identification readers. Okay, wireless communication that uses radio waves to automatically identify and track text attached to the object. So this tag, sorry, this tags called RFIDI tags have the advantage in that they do not have to be positioned precisely, I mean, relative to the reader, but can work within a few uh, meters away. So with this one, this one uses, um, See, someone is saying something. Let's see. Okay. So with the radio frequency identification readers, uh, this one called RFID tags, they have the advantage in that they do not have to be positioned precisely relative to the reader. So with this one, this one's use radio waves 
to automatically identify and track and track text. So these ones, um, sometimes they are used in animals. They are put in animals for identifying the animal. So for this one, uh, let's say maybe, okay, let's see. Yes, yes. So with this ones, if you, so for, in order for this machine to read, let's see, it's, I don't know how to put it. Let's say you have um, a tag. Okay, so let's say you put a tag in one of your, let's say you have animals like cows, you have a farm, say you have cows, then you put tags in your cows. Your cows can be read or identified using this ones, the RFIDI readers. So these readers, they read the data. So if the tag in the cow matches what is, sorry, if this reader finds data from the cow, maybe you are looking for your cow. Say maybe your cow is, is lost. Then there's a group of cows. For this ones, you can use the readers to test all these cows to find your own cow. So you will read, this one will read, uh, you will use this one to test the animals. Then if there's one cow that has a tag that matches this reader, then you'll find your cow. That's how you will be able to identify your cow. This is an example. Okay, so. These ones are wireless communications, remember? Communication that uses radio waves. Um, Yeah, it is confusing. Okay, so let's say you have a tag. The tag maybe, let's say you have a product. The product has a tag. Now you are using this radio frequency identification. Say this radio um, frequency identification readers is used. Let's say, I don't know how to put it guys, but this one, this one's use a radio wave to automatically identify and track tags attached to the object. Say you are in a shop, in a shop, ne? So in a shop, there's an object. This object has a tag. So for you to find the price of this object, you can use the radio frequency identification. Or maybe these ones are mostly used by the door in the supermarket you have something like this say you take an object without paying so this one's use a radio wave to identify i mean to automatically identify and track tech so the item has a tag sure okay so <laughs> right so guys wait stop confusing me I say, for instance, you are in a shop, you have seen those scanners by the door. Yeah? So every item in the shop has tags. Now, if you take an item without paying, take the item, the item, um, and then you try to leave the shop without paying. This one can read and track the object. So this one uses radio waves to automatically identify and track the text attached to the object. So if you have the object with you, now you did not pay. If you didn't pay, the object is going to be identified by this reader. Okay. I don't know how to put it. But let's see. Let me see your chat. Uh, Yes, yes, it will trigger an alarm, yes. So these ones, they use radio waves to automatically identify and track tags attached to objects. So these ones can tag, I mean, 
they can identify the object and then trigger an alarm. Someone is saying, I have seen those before. I have mainly seen them in shops like Mr. Price or Edgar's. Yes. And also clicks, this cam. Most shops have those ones. Yes. Sorry for confusing you guys. Ooh, hey. Right, so for in the scanners, in the scanner or scanning devices, we also have a cell phone. A cell phone has the ability to act, to act as a barcode or QR scanner. So your cell phone has the ability of scanning. It has the ability of scanning. <clears throat> Oh, uh, no ma'am, sorry, I confused myself. Thanks for explaining. Oh, thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much. Um, now we have a cell phone. Cell phone, we, we said cell phones had as an ability to act as a barcode or QR scanner. So you can scan barcodes using your cell phone. As you can see from the picture, cell phones, smartphones, sorry, smartphones can also scan documents, provided that you download the application for it. So if you have an application for scanning, then you can scan documents. So cell phones have, they have the ability of scanning. Yes, yes, like tap and pay, yes, and also like scanning documents if you have the app for scanning. Yes, smartphones can scan by using the built in camera of the phone. Okay, like on this picture. In some places, when you are looking for a direction, they will give you something like this. So they'll give you this uh, barcode. Some give you a, a <clears throat> yes, they'll give you this QR and barcode. Then you use your cell phone to scan. When you scan or, yes, when you scan this, then the directions appear on your cell phone. Like this one, this was used for payment. So pay here. So this one scanned this for payment. Bluetooth has that one as well. Bluetooth, what do you mean by that? What do you mean Bluetooth has one like that? What do you mean? Please explain. Michaela said yes, yes. So uh, she was replying to this example or she was giving her opinion based on the example that we have made about Mr. Price or Edgar. So she was saying yes, yes. Okay. Bluetooth has that as well, like what? Like, let's say I want to send a game to a friend. Oh, okay, yes, 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 it does, it does. Okay. Then we have the mag magnetic strip. Magnetic strip. Now with the magnetic strip, this one is often found on bank cards. Um, scan the information contained in the strip, such as a bank account number, card number, name, expiry date on the card and pin number. In the shop, when you want to buy, when you're buying something, you want to swipe your card, this one is also used for that. So if you want to make payment, you swipe your card, the magnetic strip is used. 
what's next and OCR and OCR okay let's say I want to send a game to a friend okay there is a little picture at the top of the phone it's a barcode yeah I always used to wonder what those strips were for okay now I know great so now you know this magnetic strips so these ones are found often on the bank cards so bank cards you have seen the strips okay then we have an OCR so with this one the strips scan the information contained in the script so in the strip if you have the strips the strips can be scanned using this one this device so such as bank account number scan the information contained in the strip so the information that is contained in the strip can be scanned by this device Okay, what's an OCR? Here we have an OCR, the most popular application of OCR scanners is converting printed paper documents into machine readable text documents that can be edited with a word processing program. Say you have your hard copy or your printed documents. If you have your printed document or your hard copy on your in your hand you can use this OCR optical character recognition so you can use this to scan a printed paper then this device will scan what is in the paper and then put this into a machine readable text device unlike a normal scanner a normal scanner it scans the document but then you can edit the document but an OCR scanner with an OCR scanner, you can scan a printed uh, paper document into a machine readable text document. So once you have scanned this document, you can now edit with a word processing program. So a document that is scanned using an OCR device or an OCR scanner can be edited with using a word processing program. <clears throat> so, okay yes okay yes with this one you can scan a hard copy or a printed paper document then after scanning this document this document will be turned into a machine readable text but now with this one you can edit with a word processing program unlike the normal scanner the normal scanner you can scan documents but then you can't edit this document but if you scan a document using an OCR scanner you can edit the document because the document is changed into a machine readable text document that you can edit with a word processing pro program sorry okay so let's say for an example you have your, your a printed paper document maybe it's your assignment you have printed the document now you see some mistakes that you have made if there are mistakes uh, that you have made but now you do not have a soft copy everything is deleted you are left with the printed paper an OCR, an OCR can be used, an OCR can be used to scan the document. So with an OCR, you can scan the printed document. You don't have to worry. Scan the printed document and then 
this document will be turned into a matching readable document. Now you can then edit, fix those mistakes. Mikaela, your hand was up. Let's see. I see Neo, Neo is here. Hi, Neo. Okay. Now we have video input devices. Video input devices. This is easy. Please name one for me. Any video input device that you know. Any video input device that you know. Oh, I, I wonder what an OCR could do. Okay, so an OCR with an OCR, let me go back. An OCR, OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. So this is a scanner, an OCR scanner. I have made an example. Let's say you have your printed document in your hand. The document is printed you do not have a soft copy or you do not have a document that is saved in or a duplicate that is saved in your computer. So here is the document printed, but now you see problems in the document. You made some spelling mistakes. Uh, you don't know what to do. Instead of starting afresh, you can use an OCR scanner. Scan the document. So this scanner will scan everything in the document and put this thing into a machine readable text. So it will turn this into a machine readable text document. Then you can use your, your Microsoft Word to change and fix the mistakes that you have made. So instead of starting afresh, you, you can use an OCR scanner. Okay. You're welcome, Mikaela. Okay, so video input devices, any video input device that you know, any video input device. So any devices that are used or any device that is used to input any uh, device used for an input i mean sorry any video input devices and input devices that is used to record videos any device A video camera. So a video camera is in is a video input device. So this one is used for recording videos. Video camera are designed to capture and store videos on a memory card. So this one you use this to record to capture and store videos okay so the videos are stored on a memory card that you put in your video camera then we have a webcam here is an example of a webcam a webcam is short for web camera this one is used to capture pictures or videos images of a scene in front of it. It can be either built in into a computer or connected using a USB. So we have 
webcams that are built into computers and we have webcams that are not built into computers. So if you want to record a video using a webcam, you can use the webcam that is built in to your computers or you can connect a webcam to your computer using a USB cable. I'm sure you can see a webcam. If you are using a laptop, can you see a webcam? All right, so these ones are used when making video calls, recording interviews on a computer or taking part in a video Skype meeting. So these ones are used for video calls. For example, when you're Skyping, or recording interviews on a computer. Even when using Zoom, you can use a webcam to record. So there's an option for a video, we all know. Right, so then we have audio input devices. Now, this is simple. The audio input devices this is where we find a microphone. Remember, audio input devices that falls under input. So we use a microphone to input. This is an input device used to input sound into a computer that is then stored in a digital form to be played back later. Okay. It can be used for example add sound to a multimedia presentation or to mix music. So we know what a microphone is used for. We have a video recorder. A video recorder refers to any device capable of recording a voice message. Now we have biometric input devices. The biometric input devices. Fingerprint scanner. Someone, Lionheart, is it, is it you who mentioned uh, the fingerprint scanners? So yes, we have a fingerprint scanner. A fingerprint scanner, this one. These scanners are one of the most developed and commonly used biometric devices. Okay, um, it serves as, an, as a type of authentication device that verifies the user's fingerprint by comparing it with the saved fingerprint data. So just like in your cell phone, in your cell phone you have this, you can use a password, a pattern or a fingerprint, remember? So fingerprint scanners, your cell phone has a fingerprint scanner. So fingerprint scanners are used to verify the user's fingerprint so, so that only the user can use the cell phone or only the user can use this device. Some fingerprint scanners are used um, in residences. So if you want to enter or you want to go to your place, you can use the fingerprint scanner. Some uh, some places have a fingerprint scanner just to ensure that you reside there. Okay, for an example, in schools, some of the schools use fingerprint scanners to identify the students or the learners that are registered. So if you are not registered in that school, then you won't be able to enter. Fingerprint scanners are not only found in cell phones. There are other devices where you can use, or where there are other devices used to, to scan fingerprints. Okay, then a retina scanner. Retina scanner. This one uses the unique pattern on a user's retina blood vessels to identify the user. Right, so guys, Due to time, I'll have to stop there. We will continue tomorrow. 
um, we will continue. Uh, we have a retina scanner. You can search for this on your own. A retina scanner, write it down. Then we have a facial recognition scanner. Some cell phones have a facial recognition scanner. Facial recognition scanner. Okay. Yes, so tomorrow we will look at the output devices, the output devices and their uses. So one of them, or let me say, let me mention two, the headsets and speakers. Headsets and speakers. So guys, tomorrow, the output devices. Bye.